attention to several cases of unsolved missing black women from the Chicago area. You see when it comes to us. They waited two years before they even said it was foul play. I kept asking myself why her, why couldn't it have been me instead of her? Okay, you all, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, before we do begin, I just wanted to thank you guys for tuning into this video. I appreciate you guys for even taking the time out to click on my video. For those of you who don't know, I am Nianche, and this part of my channel is just a little segment called True Crime Community. We cover missing black women cases, unsolved, unsolved murder, whether it is old or new. I just try to find the most untalked about cases and just try to spread light and just bring them to the forefront. I try to get as much eyes on them as possible and if that is something that you guys are interested in please make sure to subscribe share um and just continue to tune back in because your interactions will definitely bring more eyes to these cases and if you aren't interested in truth crime i do have um other parts on my channel where you guys can watch either vlogs that i do for like shopping or even hair tutorial videos and i also just started to incorporate audiobooks and reactions if you guys are interested in that and i'm so sorry for the long introduction i'm still trying to figure the introduction and outro out so bear with me i think i've changed it a million times at this point but without further ado, I just want to jump right into this video. Um, and I am just catching a cold. My son is in school, so we like literally ping pong cold sometimes. Um, so I don't want my voice to be distracting during this video. So just bear with me with that as well. So I do apologize for that. Now, this video is going to be about the beautiful and late Joyce Vincent. Joyce Vincent was born on October 19th, 1965 and she was born in the London Hammersmith area. She had been raised near the Fulham Palace Road and I was very unfamiliar with this place so I did go ahead and look it up. But it's actually in the UK. She had been born to her father Lawrence and her mother Lyris. Her parents immigrated from Grenada and decided to settle in London. And Joyce had actually been of Dougla descent. And if you don't know, Dougla descent is just someone who is mixed with African and Indian. So her father Lawrence had actually worked as a carpenter and he had actually been of African descent and her mother had actually been the one of Indian descent. Sadly enough, at the age of 11, Joyce's mother passed away. And as you can imagine, for any child that is very very tough and at age 11 you're entering you're almost entering your teenagehood and at that time it's very crucial for a little girl to need her mother but joyce did however have the help of her older sisters for her upbringing it was said that joyce's father was very emotionally unavailable and they had actually developed a strained relationship because of it now according to some people Joyce had actually been going around saying that her father passed away in 2001 when he actually passed away in the year of 2004. I don't know if that's when the strained relationship began, um, but Terrence had actually been unaware that his daughter had been going around saying that he had passed away. Joyce attended Malcolm Bay Primary School and then Philham Gilead School for girls. Shortly after, at the age of 16, she left and it is unclear why she dropped out. Joyce was said to be very popular, especially among her fan group. She had a wide circle of friends in the music industry. When Joyce was 25 years old, she actually attended and was also recorded in the backstage audience at the concert of a Nelson Mandela event. And this event was actually held in April of 1990. And it was the event of the International Tribute for a Free South Africa. And this event was held at the Webley Stadium. She had actually met Mr. Mandela face to face and actually got the opportunity to shake his hand. In 1985, Joyce had actually began working as a secretary at the OCL 
in the city of London. OCL stands for Overseas Containers Limited and it had been a company that simply shipped containers. So it was documented that she had actually went on to work for the C. Aitwa. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And Law Dem Bentwa. And this had been before joining Ernest and Young. And she had actually worked for Ernest and Young for about four years in the Treasury Department. But Joyce had actually resigned in March of 2001 and the reason why is unknown. Shortly after this she had actually spent time in a DV shelter and at the same time she had a job working as a cleaner at a budget hotel. During this time she had actually grew apart from her four sisters and father. A source in her investigation had actually spoke out and he had stated that she detached from her family but there was no bus up in his words he states that they were a really nice family and she had just been in a bad relationship a dv situation and she had been caught up in her life basically there have been speculations that she had either been ashamed of being a victim or she had been frightened that the man who was a and her would have been able to find her. In the year of 2003, Joyce had actually moved again, this time to a bedsit flat in the Wood Green shopping area, and her apartment building had actually been above the shopping mall. The flat had been owned by Metropolitan housing trust now a bedsit for those who did not know because i actually was unaware of what this was it's just basically an apartment where there are occupants who rent individual rooms but all the occupants share the restroom so joyce had actually had the room to herself only and this unit had actually was used to be a house for people who had been hurt by their spouses in that same year, 2003, after throwing up large amounts of blood, Joyce was actually hospitalized and she stayed at Middlesex Hospital for two days. And this had been due to a peptic eucler. Some people had felt that her cause of death was a result of that. But a lot of people wondered how someone can go unnoticed for almost three years. According to pathologists and authorities, Joyce's cause of death is still very much unknown. As is the day of her death date, they don't know that for sure as well. There is some speculations though that she might have passed away around December 2003 and that is because when they discovered Joyce's body she had been laying on the floor on her back and she had been in the middle of wrapping up Christmas gifts. They described her remains as mostly skeletal. Now as I mentioned before it was said that she had been wrapping up Christmas presents but it had been unclear who the Christmas gifts had been for and the Christmas presents had obviously never been delivered to anyone. It does make you wonder if Joyce had actually been close to the people she had been wrapping those gifts for. Maybe she had been attempting to make up with her sisters with just a little bit of gifts, but we may never know because Joyce is not here today. They did make the discovery that the food in her fridge had an expiration date of 2003. Now, I know a lot of people are wondering how did she go unnoticed for so long? How did anyone not smell anything or how did her neighbors not realize anything was out of order? Maybe how was her bills being paid at that time? Now, according to reports, people had just assumed, especially her neighbors, they had just assumed that her apartment had just been vacant. They thought that the smell of decomposing body tissue had just been the trash can. And there wasn't like a main window um in the room that she had been in that would like peer directly into the window. So it was no way to see directly into her room that she had been occupying at that time. This apartment complex had also been busy. I heard reports of so... I guess it was just very distracting from the TV that had been on the entire time. And must I mention, the TV running for almost three years is literally, it's, it's wild to me. But the building being noisy, I guess, was a reason why her neighbors was not able to just hear her TV running all day. 
Now, Joyce did have a single neighbor who um, lived next to her. And the way her flat was set up, no one had to actually pass her door to get to their apartment. So no one really even noticed anything out of the ordinary. She lived in an area where people wasn't as friendly either. They didn't really want to get to take the time out to know their neighbors because they were, you know, in and out, um, going through their own things. People pretty much just kept to themselves. But her rent had been paid every month due to the Metropolitan Trust, so it didn't raise any red flags for her landlord. This gave the impression that Joyce had still been alive and well. Before going on, I do want to mention that in Joyce's room, she did have the windows slightly open, so maybe that's why the smell did not, you know, linger. But she did also have piles of mail just stacked up in front of her room door. So that should have also indicated that she was not there anymore. And that's probably why her neighbors felt like the unit had been unoccupied. So as I stated before, you guys, the Metropolitan Trust had been helping her out, but they was paying partially partial of her rent. So at the time when she first began her lease with the room, I'm guessing she was, you know, keeping up with her side. And once it came to when she was not paying, her portion was adding up. Now, eventually the total added up to... 2,400 pounds. Now that converted into US dollars is actually $3,000. The housing authority, of course, went ahead and they began to investigate. They came to her flat so they can repossess her, um, room. And, you know, rightfully so because at the time they did not know what was going on. So they probably just thought, oh, okay, we're paying your half. You're not keeping up, you know. But gladly, they went and they checked on her. Unfortunately, though, it had been much too late. On January 25th, 2003, authority had came to her flat so they can repossess it. But what they discovered is not what they thought they would find. They discovered a skeletal Joyce and they obviously had to break into her flat. The TV and the heating had still been on and Joyce had been so badly decomposed that they had to identify her through her teeth. And as I stated before, the police suspected no foul play. The front door had been locked and there had been no evidence of foul play. And as I stated previously, they had to force their way in. At the time, Joyce did have a boyfriend, but the police could not locate him at the time. And I don't know if they did extensive investigation to locate him, um, to just ask some questions, you know, to help with the investigation into her um death but there is no further information on them doing that and her sisters did hire a pi to find her and if you don't know what that is it is an in private investigator it had been reported that they had actually reached out to the salvation army but their attempts were not reached so the detectives had actually done some digging and they actually found the house that she used to live at and at that home they found all the letters that her sisters had been sending her the sisters received no response from joyce because obviously she had been deceased at that time her family went on to explain to the police that she had cut ties with them for a while now at this point. Now, Glasgow Harrell reported, and I quote, Her friends described her as someone who fled at any sight of trouble, who would walk out of jobs if she clashed with a co-worker, and who moved from one flat to another one, basically bouncing all over London. And I do just want to pause for a moment because we obviously know what Joyce was going through at that time and why she decided that she wanted to isolate herself. But it just goes to show that no one truly knew what she was going through. No one truly took the time out to check up on her, not just through letters electronically, but um, physically. I mean, besides the efforts that her sisters put in. They continue on to say that she didn't answer the phone for her sisters or anyone for that matter. And it didn't appear she had her own close friends. Instead, she relied on having the company of her ex-boyfriend's friends or co-workers, a flatmate or strangers. And I do think this is very common with a lot, well, most of abuse victims or anyone that is simply just going through something. Misery sometimes does not love company and sometimes people quickly go into isolation mode. But a lot of people did speak on her behalf in the documentary on her life. 
Carol Morley. She, along with Sawe Ashton, and I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, but Miss Ashton had actually played um, Joyce in the documentary. Now, this documentary had been released in 2011, and Miss Morley had actually went on a hunt to track down a lot of people that was in Joyce's life, and she just wanted to get a clear picture on who Joyce had been as an individual. Joyce was described as beautiful, exotic, everyone fancied her, everyone wanted to be like her, and all the guys wanted to be with her. They stated that Joyce had a beautiful singing voice. The documentary had aired in 2011, and there were a few people that actually spoke out on her behalf. People that were claiming to be close to her um, and knew of her. And they would speak on the fact that she wasn't a drinker, nor did she do recreational activities, if you know what I mean. A lot of outside people had speculations on why exactly she was such a very distant person. But of course, none of it was true. And those who knew somewhat of her or was somewhat close to her spoke on the fact that she lives a very glamorous life. And she seemed like such a very glamorous figure. And I mean, this is obviously all allegedly on my part because i don't know joyce um personally but this is just what i've gathered she even had an ex come and speak forward he shared pictures um that he had of her because carl mosley did not have any and he spoke about the fact that she was just such a nice person and just spoke very highly of joyce friends did find it kind of odd how they lost contact with her in their words they found it hard to understand some also spoke on how weird it was that no one seemed to check up on her or seemed to be there for joyce i mean in the hospital when joyce you know um she had listed her next of kin as one of the bank managers and me personally i do not know how close they were that is unclear to me um, there was no information on how close they were. For all we know, they could have been very, very close and um, Joyce had been very fond of her. So must have been if she was to put that or she just was not close with anyone at the time and she knew that and she was under pressure. But we will never, never truly know. And I do know that today's video was a bit different from my usual videos that may involve suspects or, um, you know, criminal investigations into the cases but i did kind of want to touch on this case only because mental health illness is very 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 on the rise in this generation and i just wish that joyce had someone to speak to i wish that she had proper outlets and just someone there for her i wish that she knew that you know there were people that loved her and she felt that i wish the flat community was more friendlier um more of a community because who knows maybe just maybe joyce could have got help in time it had been said that when joyce's body was found her body had been undisturbed they speculated that she might have suffered from a heart attack due to her environment of her apartment and as i stated before she lived in a flat in just this room so it wasn't much space for her but according to pathologists the reasoning for her death is still unclear i forgot to mention earlier but there was a statement said from one of the people that had been said to be friends with her that Joyce had been uneasy. She felt uneasy whenever men would come on too strong. I guess it made her uncomfortable the way men would hit on her if they're like too aggressive, which I think is something all women around the world can definitely, definitely resonate with. But no one truly expected for Joyce's life to end this way. No one expected her to end up the way that she did. So when Joyce's ex-boyfriend spoke out, he touched on the fact that he didn't even know Joyce passed away. The only reason that he knew anything was because he saw a poster. Now, this poster was an ad basically stating um, her name and asking, did anyone know her? And it also listed her address and just a little bit of information about her. Carol made this so she can just get some information on Joyce.
first. Martin, who had been her ex-boyfriend's name, he stated that he and Joyce dated for three years up until 2002. And he speaks on the fact that he was very surprised that she was living in private housing. He was shocked when he heard. Of course, during the interview, Martin became very emotional. He began reminiscing on the time the two shared together, the times where they used to play tennis with each other, go out to eat at different fancy restaurants, and even playing classical music together and just vibing. Carol Morley said that she was very interested in this story. She states that she was shocked at the case and this prompted her to make the documentary Dreams of My Life. It's honestly a blessing that she even took the time out to interview those people and take the time out to make this documentary just to put Joyce's story out there. A neighbor had actually spoke out about Joyce's situation in her diary and that lady's name was Karen. And she spoke on the fact that the situation definitely scared her. Stating that she was the same age that Joyce had been. And she wondered solely all the time if that would be her outcome. It's definitely interesting to hear about this story. Because it just makes you sit and wonder like how can people go unnoticed for so long how is there just not one person that decided to reach out how could they not smell the mummified body it's just it, it's hard to wrap your head around there were to my surprise numerous cases about things like this one case of a woman going unnoticed for 45 years i couldn't find much information on this but her name was florence charleston if you guys want to check that out and there was a case of a man going unnoticed in his norway flat for nine years and then we know about the very famous case of lacey fletcher who was left to sit on her couch for over 12 years so it's definitely disturbing but not uncommon and that just leads me to say just check on your family reach out to them even if you have to make a pop-up make sure that you are keeping in touch because you just never know what someone is going through you never know where someone you know might be headed or what's going on around them you can potentially save their lives so as always i would love to have some healthy conversations in the comments if you guys are interested and if you want to send me any videos that you would like for me to speak on and cover you can go ahead and check out my social media links down in the description box below and that was pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you on the next one stay safe out there my beautykins